Hey everybody, this is Thomas Vanderveen. I am recording uh, this video for my digital and media literacy in the classroom presentation. I'll use GoAnimate here for that. So uh, it's going to be a little unorthodox presentation, but I just thought uh, it's a good creative, so I decided to get a little bit creative. So hope you enjoy. Okay, so when discussing the definition of new literacy versus old, uh, new literacy is technically anything that's online. Uh, the use of online uh, readings, video, like TED Talks, uh, online text with infographics versus a textbook, basically, or novels being the old literacy. All right, FaceTime myself in here. Um, again, students can be more successful after graduation if they're digitally literate, which means knowing how to identify and create digital solutions. So how to find a, something for a web quest and how to create their own presentation like the one that you're watching right now makes them better learners and better employees. So this chart here is going to talk about the difference between traditional literacy and digital literacy. A few examples are, you know, back when you had... Uh, you know, you're reading out of an encyclopedia, you know the information was already vetted. Nowadays, when you read online, you have to make sure the information's vetted, make sure it's accurate. Um, before you would read, now you're skimming. Uh, there's a few more. Another simple difference between traditional and digital literacy is the way that the text is organized. Traditional prose and you know, nonfiction, fictional um, books are set up very sequentially by chapters, whereas online, things are broken up and chopped up into all kinds of different pieces. So students need to learn how to attack that visually as well. So digital literacy is really defined as students being able to analyze a problem and determine how to use digital tools to solve it, whether that be a web quest, in inquiry-based thing in a classroom, or if, for example, your toilet broke at home and you have to fix it and replace it using YouTube videos for that. It's not just written material. So again, digital literacy is really about um, creating within students technology intelligence that will allow them to combine and create technologies to develop new and dynamic solutions, meaning they can utilize whatever resource it is online to have a dynamic solution for a problem, be it a video or online article or whatever, will help solve their problem in real life. You know, and again, how has media and technology changed really the skills that students need to learn in the classroom? Well, it's really changed the way that I teach because I know that I have to incorporate technology consistently to prepare my students for college and for future employment. So I have them create all types of multimedia presentations using various platforms. So it's really changed the way that I teach and the way that they and one of the article uh, statements was that technology has changed basically every discipline and occupation, and that's totally true. And an example would be teachers. Uh, I would, probably wouldn't be in this program if it wasn't for the move in technology and uh, for me wanting to know how to implement it effectively with my students. So it's changed my job dramatically. I use technology every day. And the article also states that there's a huge gap between what students think they know about using technology and what employers say they, they get from them. Uh, basically, students think because they're on the technology um, all the time, because they're using it all the time, they really have a great knowledge of it, but they really don't. Uh, some statistics will show that. And the statistics on the screen show that huge gap between students' overconfidence and what employers say that they get from their uh, prospective employees. 44% of students said they were well prepared for their job, whereas only 18% of surveyed employers responded that students really were prepared. So there's a big disparaging uh, amount there. And again, you know, students need to learn how to not just be consumers of technology, but be able to utilize it to effectively solve problems. They know how to use Facebook and Instagram and Snapchat. And it kills me when teachers say, well, students know technology more than we do. Really? Social media is that an effective problem solving tool? And to move on from that, I mean, the true characteristics of digital literacy is that students should be able to utilize them in their real life on a regular basis to solve problems. So digital literacy is made up of understanding how to use, whether it be videos or whatever, media or online articles to solve problems in their real life. So that really is what it, what it should be. So as a final lesson for today, intellectual independence is the utmost important thing with digital literacy. Not just being able to be a consumer of it, not just being able to understand information online, but maybe coming up with your own, creating an app, 
solving your own problems in real life, or maybe even being a scientist. So I might be a scientist that you taught digital literacy in your classroom, and I might come up with a cure for cancer uh, because I was made to be an independent learner and use digital literacy to my advantage. That's the importance of digital literacy in the classroom. Maybe I could come up with an app to solve world hunger or solve a disease. Thank you for listening to our presentation.